Ellie and Ollie Eel, a tale of a fantastic voyage. Let's go. Ellie and Ollie were big slippery eels. They were long skinny fish covered with tiny scales. Their skin felt as smooth as velvet because the scales were so small. Ollie lived most of his life in a bay near the ocean. But when Ellie was young, she swam and wiggled her way up a river. Ellie stayed in the river until she was seven years old. Then she swam down the river to the bay. It was there that she met Ollie. Hello, how are you today? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? How are you today? I'm fine. I'm glad that you are too. Well, Ollie said, I'm hungry, but I know where there are good things to eat at Tate's Landing. See, Tate's Landing was a seafood store beside the bay. Oh, you really should not go there, piped up the other eels in the bay. You might get caught in one of Mark Tate's eel pots. What is an eel pot? Ollie did not want to listen to them. Come on, Ellie, let's swim over to Tate's Landing tonight. We can find some tasty scraps of fish and crab there. So that night when eels like to feed, Ollie swam closer and closer to Tate's Landing. Ellie thought that it was not a good thing to do, but she followed behind him and did not say a word. With his slippery skin, Ollie swam and slipped easily along the bottom, and his sense of smell was the very best. Ollie could smell things he liked to eat as he swam near Tate's Landing, and suddenly he slipped inside one of Mark's eel pots and was trapped. There it is. Ellie swam up near him. Oh no, right away, she was trapped too. How can you swim in the pot, but you cannot get out of the pot? Thinking finger, thinking, thinking. It's wide at the entrance and narrow once you get in there. I'm wondering, let's find out. Other eels were in the pot squirming and squirming. Oh, you should not have come in here, they cried. You will not be able to find your way out. Soon Mark came along and lifted the pot. He sold eels to fishermen. Oh no, for bait. So he was very happy when he saw all those eels. Means that eels are gonna be eaten, friends. A fisherman and his wife came to Tate's Landing and they gave Mark a big nickel for a bag full of eels. A big nickel is what Mark called a coin worth 50 cents. They put the bag in their truck and down the road they went. Ellie and Ollie and all the other eels squirmed and squirmed in that bag. Oh no, no. Suddenly, the bag of eels broke open. The fisherman's wife screamed, yeah, and she jumped up and down in the truck. <laughs> and those slippery eels just kept on squirming. The fisherman stopped the truck and opened the door. Let's get out of here, cried Ellie. And Ellie and Ollie and all the other eels squirmed out of the truck. <laughs> I think I would scream too. There they go. They're going back to the water. The eels wiggled their, eels wiggled their way into the water near the room. They quickly swam until they were back in the bay, but away from Tate's Landing. Now, it was not long after their escape that a strange change came over Ellie and Ollie. They changed color, and their eyes became enlarged. I feel a strong urge to swim far away, Ollie said. I do too, Ellie replied. Something inside the eels was telling them a special time had come. It was time for them to swim to Sargasso Sea, many, many miles away in the ocean. Ellie and Ollie began that long swim with many other grown-up eels. They swam and swam until they came to the Sargasso Sea. The eels dived deep down in the water. Both Ellie and Ollie were so very tired. Oh, I'm worn out, Ellie said, but I must release my eggs. And she then released millions of eggs into the water. Ellie and Ollie's work was done. Their life cycle was over. Very tiny eels soon hatched from the eggs. They did not look anything like Ellie and Ollie. They looked a lot like little leaves and were clear as glass. The baby eels began a year-long voyage to America. They knew they should go there, just as Ollie and Ellie had done when they were little. The baby eels drifted with the Gulf Stream. As they came near the coast of America, they changed and began to look like eels. The young eels, or elvers, as they're called, returned to the bays and rivers where their parents had lived. It was truly a fantastic voyage, for they found their new homes all by themselves. How did they know that? Let's turn the page and see. The answer is as slippery as an eel, for no human really knows for sure. It's a mystery, like our mystery twistery, and we all say, the end.